So where are we going right now? Hmm. We're going to Atlanta. Because they're setting the machine up today for the 3D printed house. Now, as we know, because you've shown and told the world that the machine should have been there when, Scott? It was supposed to be there today. I am fired up. The day has come and we are doing it in a way that nobody else is doing it. And the public is gonna get to witness every aspect of the building process. Like I said, no one has ever demonstrated this before. We're gonna have people on site watching the build. We're gonna document every aspect of it. Hopefully you guys have been following along. If you haven't, here's a link to the bunch of the videos. You should definitely check it out from when the house got knocked down. So we graded the property, we put the plumbing in, and now we're up to assembling the machine and we're gonna start printing this week. This week. I'm so freaking excited. So what I wanna do is I wanna turn around, I'm gonna show you how the machine is assembled, show you the different parts of the machine, and how we laid out the plumbing, the RCA, and you're actually going to be able to get a general idea about what the house is gonna look like, how the rooms are situated, how the kitchen's situated, living area, before we start printing. So let's go check it out. So there's four main components that you need in order to 3D print the house. The first is obviously, the 3D printer. So we're gonna take you to the section of the 3D printer, show you exactly how they're put together, how they operate, rock and roll. So the first thing is, if you notice, we have a, we have a level site, we get RCA. So RCA gets put down on the site and tamped down to create a very solid base for the machine to run back and forth on. It's gonna be level and rock solid. After we've tamped the RCA down, we put this foam pad down, then we install the tracks. Obviously, you can see the tracks come together in three foot sections. They're stainless steel, teeth on one side, track on the other, and they fit together with a simple clip. Super important for everybody to understand, when you look at this, it's not extremely complicated. The technology is revolutionary. But when you look at each individual component and how they were built and how they were put together, it's extremely simple. That's the beauty of SQ4D's design and how they operate versus anybody else in the market. The concrete mixture is simple sand, Portland, and water. You can get it anywhere, in any market, at any Home Depot, and it's very cost effective. The track system hooks together simply. You just need two people, pull up with a trailer, unload everything, put the pieces together, and within four to six hours, the printer is up and running, and you're printing a house. So I'm here with Chief Technology Officer for SQ4D, Kristen Henry in front of one of the towers and she's gonna explain exactly how it functions, how it's designed, and how it 3D prints a house. Exactly, all right, so we already have one set of tower and tracks set up here. Uh, we have to make sure that it's very precisely aligned with the uh, whole setup of the house so that we we'll continue to print so exactly where we need to be on track. Uh, here we have one of our towers. Uh, you can see we have a winch system to help bring this side up so that we can reach the full 16-foot printing height that uh, it's capable of. We got one of the motors in now. I have to add another motor here for the uh, Y-axis movement. Uh, and then we're going to wire it all up uh, after we put the other tower up and connect the X-axis gantry. So just so people at home understand, explain the X-axis and Y-axis, yeah, how that sure. works. <laughs> So here you have the Y axis that's down along the tracks. The X axis is between the two towers going back and forth, and the Z axis is up and down. So when I look at the machine, it's, it's like obviously revolutionary technology. No one's ever done this before, especially the way that you guys are doing it. But when you look at it from like a component to po component standpoint, it, it's very simple, yeah. which I think is brilliant by design. Yep, there's a lot of aluminum welded together here. So explain kind of how that comes together. Um, you know, can this be out in the elements? What's the life expectancy of something like this? What's the maintenance associated with something like this? Oh yeah, no, this this can be outside for a very long amount of time in any element. Uh, we made sure that it was weatherproof uh, for that reason. We want to be 
able to print when it's raining. We want it to be able to sit while it's snowing, whatever. Uh, high winds, it's uh, able to withstand as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we just wanted to uh, use aluminum here to make sure it was light and uh, we didn't need any really heavy machinery on site to move it around. What's the, I see that they have lights on them. I've seen video and picture of the machine actually running at night. Yes. Right, so assuming the municipality is okay, you can basically run this. Yep, and this is very quiet. It, it doesn't output a lot of sound while operating, so mm -hmm. uh, the, the loudest part is honestly the power washer at the end to clean things out. The machine itself doesn't make much noise at all. What's the maintenance associated with just the upkeep, and then what's the life expectancy of different components? Because I know these machines aren't for sale, but I'm sure by most people's standards, they're not very cheap. What is what is it like to maintain these things and what can go? Yeah, honestly, the biggest thing to worry about is the electronics, just to make sure those connections are firm and uh, making sure that we are uh, taking care and uh, making sure that uh, all the wires are connected properly and don't have any issues. That's really the biggest thing is uh, a lot of people know electronics in the elements is not always the best, but we made sure we chose connectors and uh, insulators and such so that they would be okay but that's really the only concern uh, is to make sure that the wiring stays intact. What's the process of putting the machine together? How much manpower or female power do you need? Exactly. <laughs> how long does it take? How, how easy is it for one, two, three, four people? Do you need rigs? How long does it take to put this together before you're up and printing? Yeah, so you can realistically do this whole process with only two people. Uh, it's, it's easier to have a crew of four, then it goes a lot faster. You're just able to kind of do things twice as fast, but uh, you just need one bobcat and a couple of people and everything can get put together. I built a lot of houses. Yes. This is the most beautiful site I've ever seen. It's like metic meticulously put together, the way you guys put the RCA, everything's tamped down. Explain how the site was prepped, explain why we have the RCA here, what these channels are, and what's gonna happen first once the machine's put together. All right, so yeah, you can kind of see sort of a, an idea of what the layout of the house is gonna look like, uh, rather than doing just a traditional uh, uni thickness slab, we actually have haunches in this design. Uh, to make sure that all of the interior walls, the non-loaded bearing walls, are really well supported. Uh, so the, the slab's a bit thicker under those areas and then just uh, a normal thickness throughout the rest of it. Uh, but that's just for really extra support since we're going to be digging out the footings and foundation walls that are going to go in for the exterior walls, but the interior walls are going to do the haunches instead. So how, how thick is the slab? So this is a slab on grade foundation. There's no basement here. How thick is the slab itself? So the slab is four inches anywhere there's not a wall. Okay. And then using this uh, architectural plan to have haunches is uh, 12 inches deep where the okay. walls are going to be. So basically anywhere where there's interior walls and you have more weight, there's extra support. you need more yeah. support. So you go down 12 heavy, inches. So, uh, and, and since this is just a single story home, uh, we don't have to do interior footings, mm -hmm. uh, but we just want extra support to help uh, carry that weight and make sure the walls don't crack. What's the significance of the RCA and why do they tamp it down like this? Yeah, this is really just the base uh, of, of everything you're building on. So uh, all the ground gets excavated uh, and we need to make sure we have a nice flat surface uh, and RCA is packed down to make sure that we are uh, level on the site uh, before we begin actually building on this. So everybody understands well, the plumbing has run underground, and since the machine is base is going to, not basically, is going to 3D print the entire house, the measurements have to be spot on. Exactly. And there's only, I believe, a five inch tolerance between the two walls, so you have to make sure that you're, that you're right there. How do you guys ensure that the plumbing is spot on, and, and how convenient or inconvenient is that? Yeah, so when initially laying the plumbing, we have to make sure that we're going off of an origin point to make sure everything is exactly where it needs to be. But if it's not, the nice thing about our 3D printer and using code is it can be adjusted fairly easily. So if it turns out a, a pipe isn't exactly where it needs to be, we can adjust for that in the machine if necessary uh, using G-Code. Oh, I love it. I'm super excited to see the machine put together. I'm super excited to see this thing go, start building a house. Yeah. Thank you. Really appreciate the time. Very excited.
So we're standing in the garage. We have a traditional one car garage. They're gonna be laying down RCA, tamping it down, acts as a base so they can 3D print on top of that. Behind the garage is the utility room. You have the plumbing for the washer dryer. You can have all the utilities tucked away on this side of the house so you can't see it. There'll be a door opening here, which leads into the main living area of the house. I'm standing in what will be the dining room. Behind me will be a sliding glass door that leads out to the garage. If we continue over this way, where I'm standing is gonna be the future kitchen. We have an L-shaped kitchen here, wall to wall. This is where the sink's gonna be. Window faces out the back, which leads us again into the dining room. And then right here, into your living space. As we start to walk down the hallway, on the left will be your first bathroom for the hallway. On the right, a bedroom one, bedroom two, bedroom three. To my left, you're gonna have the master ensuite, walk-in closet for the master, and then ultimately the master bedroom right here. Now, when I first looked at this layout, I pulled the plans out and I said, the bedrooms look very, very small. But then SQ4D explained to me that that's not exactly how it works. This is the outline of where the bedrooms are, but the bedrooms are actually much larger. Obviously, we need to excavate and put footings underneath both the interior and exterior walls. So there's an additional space for that. The house is gonna come out right to this piece of twine right here. So the bedrooms are actually very good size. Your master is a 13 by 14, and the rest of the bedrooms are 11 by 12s. So by New York standards, first time home buyer standards, more than adequate bedroom size, more than adequate bedrooms, more than adequate bathrooms, getting a lot for the money. In addition, the house is gonna have a gray water system where we collect the rainwater and use it to irrigate the lawn. It's gonna have a Tesla charging station, solar panels, and I recently found out that we've made a change to radiant heat. This is truly a house of the future, eco-friendly, far less expensive, far faster. It's gonna be an amazing thing to watch. I hope you guys come along for the ride with us.